So I mentioned at the start of the previous lesson that I might add some water droplets to the leaves just for a little bit of extra interest. And I did that and I think it helps to break up the, the big shapes of the leaves and adds a little bit of extra interest. And personally, I think it's an improvement. So what I want to do, just as a quick bonus lesson, is show you how easy it is to render water droplets. They all tend to have the same characteristics, and once you understand what those are, you can pretty much um, add these droplets from memory to anything you like. And it works for any medium, not just charcoal. I don't have a reference for these water droplets, but I will include some um, in the course materials. But as I say, when you see this, you're not really going to need one. So the first thing I'm going to do is with a charcoal pencil is lay some value down onto the paper and this is going to act as the background so the background and the surrounding area that would be behind the water droplet and then with a piece of kitchen paper or a cloth or you could use your finger as well we're just going to blend that in and then the next thing I'm going to do is draw a sphere circle which is going to represent the water droplet. Now obviously this is going to be much bigger than um, what you saw on the lily on the petals itself and this is the most detail that you would ever have to do it in because you'd be drawing these the majority of the time a lot smaller you can be a lot less um, detailed a lot more carefree. And now we want to turn this circle into a sphere or half a sphere a dome shape and the way that I'm going to do that is to add a little bit of darker value to the top gradually getting lighter so that we've got the lightest area down the bottom. But before I do anything, what I want to do is reserve an area for a highlight up here. It could be this side, you need to think about the light source in your particular drawing, but to be honest, you can put the highlight anywhere and this is still going to look right. So what I'm going to do using a kneadable eraser is just remove some of that value that I've put down and then we're going to go in with the white charcoal pencil later on. Okay. So back with the charcoal pencil, a darker charcoal pencil. So I'm going to go darker nearer the top. And then as I get about halfway, I'm going to leave it the value of the background. So darker towards the top, and then gradually lightening off towards the center. And then with the white charcoal pencil, lightest area down the bottom here and then gradually lightening off towards the center so the two values meet uh, using this background value in between. Okay and then back to dark charcoal pencil again so now what I want to do is add a really nice strong cast shadow under the bottom half of the sphere. So it's the crescent shape. And what I'm going to do is just leave a gap here and you'll see why in a moment. And then remember with a cast shadow you want it darkest right underneath the object and then it gradually, only slightly, but gradually softens off as the shadow gets further away. So we're going to come in with a blending tool later on just to see how that looks like. But for now you can just decrease the pressure to create the effect of that softening off. So I want to take the shadow under here right the way through, but I'm just going to leave that area there for now. Just soften it off on the outside. Okay, and then I'm just going to take this value a little bit further out, but there's a definite change there from the cast shadow Okay, and then this top edge, just the thinnest of, I don't want to outline it too much, but you're just going to give it the thinnest of dark edges just to create some strong definition. Go a bit further around there. Uh, some strong definition with the background. And if you want to bring up the values in this top area a little bit just to help emphasize that sense of curvature, you can do. And then let's put the white highlight in. So we've reserved this area here. What I want to do is create a harsh edge here, and then we're going to do a soft edge. And again, it doesn't matter where that hard and soft edge is, but just having um, 
or just including a hard and a soft edge is what will help to in, increase the believability. So this edge is a soft edge, whereas this is a sharp line. And we'll go in with some dark value around there just to increase the, uh, the definition and the contrast between those two. Go back in with the darker charcoal pencil. And then the reason that I've left this area here, I'm just going to lighten that there, is we're going to add some reflected light. So this isn't going to be as light as this. I'm just going to bring this down. And then just using your finger, you can just blend that out. And then just to finish things off, this area here is still in shadow. So you want to just bring the value of that up slightly, but not as much as either side. Now on its own, it tends to just look like half a globe. Um, it doesn't necessarily look like a water droplet. The way that you really improve the believability is to give it some context. And the way that you do that is to add some smaller water droplets around the outer edge, different, slightly different shapes, all different sizes. So I'm gonna use the same techniques now just to create some extra water droplets just around the perimeter, and then we can come back and see what that looks like. So there we go, very quick, very simple to do. Once you've done a few of these, you'll be able to do them from memory and you can add them to all kinds of things, fruit, florals, any surface that you like.